enough layers? I guess. <laughs> <After Yes. last laughs> yes. I have one, two, oh, six. three. Six. Yeah. Six. <laughs> we'll uh, start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and yes. to the Republic for which I stand, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So the uh, first agenda item is an update from the RZ Park Property Owners Association. I don't think we ever say it uh, out the full way. It's the poem, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So, thank you guys for coming ahead. Join us. <laughs> what's, what's the proper way to go ahead? Just have a seat. Can I invite Claire up to the floor? Secretary. So I just wanted to go ahead and pass out some paper. Oh, thanks, Al. Don't know. I have a chair. Well, I guys have, been, have sat with us yes. and uh, heard our our general meeting and we just wanted to go ahead and have the opportunity to, to, to stay before you to stay known to the uh, the board of trustees and um, to hopefully work with you on, on some of these things and to thank you yeah. uh, so i just wanted to go ahead and get Claire, who is um I'm nicholas moore by the way i'm uh, at john hancock and i'm also the, uh, the president of arctic park property owners association I'm joined by Claire Halleck, who's our secretary, and um, I wanted to go ahead and come before you earlier, uh, right after our meeting in November, but um, for one reason or another, I'm, I'm here now, and um, I just wanted to go ahead and, and just um, take down some of the things that you probably have seen before, uh, but I, I wanted to go ahead and, again, let you know that we're, we're thinking about these issues, and we know that you're working on some of them, and um, here's some updates on them, if it's appropriate. Um, we would certainly wanted to thank this this body for your work uh, on the the portico. Uh, that's that's huge to us. And uh, the village of Irvington, uh, as far as I'm concerned, saved and secured that. And we you know we were both <laughs> and you, you folks came to, to our rescue and came to our answer. And uh, we're, we're thrilled about that. We hope that's going to have a, a good story. We're watching. The, um, the tenant, the leaseholder, uh, as we go forward, we know there's been some conversations between that leaseholder and, um, and others to try to go ahead and secure uh, a good use going forward. It's probably gonna end up back for you. So we're, we just feel like we're, we're part of that team and uh, we wanna be part of the solution. Um, improved street lighting. Uh, again, uh, you, you heard it before, but there's a lot of our members who thought that there were some dim, dimly lit areas on um, Arsley Avenue West and Hudson Road West. Uh, Larry went ahead and uh, on your behalf committed to at least having the village take a look at it from a clear, careful perspective. Uh, we're, of course, concerned about some of the, uh, the, the safety issues associated with large, unlit, you know, dark areas. Uh, we just want to make sure that that, that once people go up and down to to it from the station, that they're protected in the best way possible. The pathway. Congratulations. We are thrilled. Uh, <coughs> and I went ahead and recently sat with Mercy, um, Tom Simmons, who is I guess their their VP of facilities, and uh, we're we're blown away when he went ahead and showed us schematic level plans. And um, thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for going ahead and advancing this particular item. Um, we, we think that's great. We wanna go ahead and also keep on urging this board to keep going forward. Uh, I understand, I just spoke to Tom literally minutes before I came here tonight. It sounds to me like the dialogue is, is ongoing, it's real. There's probably some discussion, uh, I know that um, Mercy wants to put some lighting, expensive lighting along the pathway. There's probably 
So uh, back and forth a little bit with regard to cost because it, it is a large project. We just think that that's, that's a great, great project and fits in largely with your scheme that you're trying to go ahead and get done. And that's to get people out of their cars walking uh, the safe, safe streets of Irvington. And that, that just couldn't be, couldn't be better. Uh, we think that we can help when the time is right, and we hope it's soon, we think that we can go ahead and help you get the message out to the constituency, uh, your residents, uh, our members, uh, by perhaps going ahead and distributing a form of plans that's approved by you and by Mercy, perhaps co-hosting a, a meeting for presentation and comment. Well, we'd love to go ahead and do that, make this a special session. And uh, we also think that we can help by going ahead and lending our support to the, pro to the project and getting behind it and being a booster in the background and saying that this is something that we, we fully back. And um, we just would love you to fast track this and we'd love to go ahead and see this thing uh, you know, finalized, bid, and let as soon as possible this spring, uh, if possible, in 2017. He also, Tom also talked about um, completing that with the uh, right way, that dedicated the right turn onto Broadway at the same time, which would make it would be that's just sad. Yes. Know that that's probably hung up with DOT and, you know, in my past life, I know what that's like. Yeah. But, but, and I know that this one's hung up probably with, with the railroad and Amtrak. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, um, it's very complicated. Well, it's not, it's not as bad as we'd hoped, but there's Village Land, Mercy Land, MTA land and even Hudson House land. Right. So the legalities of getting all the easements and everything are probably going to be the hardest part. The, yeah. good, the good news there, other than the fact that Mercy is also very um, excited about the project, is that MTA is, if not excited about it, they're okay with it. They're on board. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're, they're, on board. they're on board with it. And Hudson House is obviously they say a lot about incredible. It. Thank you. <laughs> well, so. Have you guys, Larry, have you guys actually gone ahead and reached out to Hudson House? Yes. Okay, so you're you're in contact with them. I gave them I gave them all the information that they needed. I believe they were having a meeting off the top of my head. It might have been sometime midweek last week. Okay. I'm going to round back with with them. We've got Bob Brown who sits on our board, mm -hmm. who's our liaison at the Hudson House. Yeah. But they, 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 I sent them maps. I sent them maps showing yeah. exactly the piece of property that I'm talking about, where there's, you know, just ever so slightly an amount of that bridges on their property, but we need to deal with it. And, right. Uh, that's it. So. That's great. Yeah. But, uh, you were just talking about the dedicated right turn. You're talking about the coming out of the exit. That's the same way. That yes. was the, the second major commitment that came out of the, you know, the, the settlement or the, uh, the extension of the special program, and which is the, the free flowing right turn lane that comes out of Mercy under Broadway southbound. Okay, but the, the part that involves some um, easement by Hudson House, that's the... That's just that's a side that's side that's 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 the right turn. That's why it's on there. That's the right turn. That's a separate right turn. Yeah, exactly. They both involve Mercy. Yes. That was the only connection, right? But DOT, we're waiting, we're essentially waiting for them, right? The state... It's the Mercy is... It's Mercy's application. And the last we checked with Tom, they were waiting on some DOT approval. I think I think they were getting some feedback recently. That's the last I heard. Okay. Well, that that doesn't mean it was approved, but I think yeah. they got some feedback on their <laughs> on their application. That's right. That's all. That's, all. that's, that's the last thing. That would be great if I could. Um, <laughs> so, one of the things that uh, again talking about the, the same area, Ardsley Avenue West, Hudson Road West. Uh, I noticed. I think on Ardsley Avenue West, there is a painted solid white line that delineates sort of a shoulder um, uh, between, you know, Broadway all the way down, you know, curling around past Hudson House and all the way down to the station. I think this is for sort of an informal pedestrian pathway. Uh, it's faded. I was wondering, uh, would the village please take a look at it? I think it would be a quick, quick fix to go ahead and put a little bit more white paint on this and perhaps a little bit of signage going ahead and designating this uh, as an existing, it's, it's already there. It's already an existing pathway on the shoulder. And uh, I thought that would be pretty interesting. Again, 
just worried about all the different, and we're trying to encourage more and more people to go ahead and uh, get out of their cars and walk this beautiful, beautiful stretch. Um, let's see, Mercy College shuttle. We're just asking the Board of Trustees to keep on their hit list. We, we, a poet in general likes the idea of Mercy College shuttling. Why wouldn't you? It's, it's going ahead and taking advantage of the training. It's getting people out of their cars, uh, which goes ahead and puts less burden on, um, you know, Langdon or, or Washington or some of the other side streets. So we're in favor of that. We hope in the future that it becomes, the shuttle becomes less will be used if this pathway comes in. Why would you need to go ahead and shuttle if people could go ahead and actually walk up the hill? That's the best. Um, but we think the, in the interim, and we'd like to go request the thing out of the bot, take a look at some, a safe sort of landing space where uh, the shuttle can go ahead and pull in, in around the station. This is the shuttle from the station to the, to to the, the campus. Yeah, to the so. campus. And yes. does it come? Does it just come up? It comes up to the aqueduct, and then what, what does it do? I think it literally comes I've to, to the front of Mercy. I think it gets on Broadway. It goes on Broadway. Oh, I have to go on Broadway. Right. On Broadway yeah. Avenue West, all the way down to the station. And I think that the uh, the one thing that I think we could take take a look at that's worth taking a look at is sort of the safe landing area, sort of the loading unloading. So when the, if the students are loading or unloading from the shuttle. They are not um, blocking through traffic, and there's no pedestrian. The pedestrian vehicle conflict is, is minimized. So, if this is just an off the cuff thought, if eventually when this path and our part of the path and Mercy's part of the path for pedestrians, for students coming off the train, if there were students who couldn't walk or had disabilities or sure. issues, I'm wondering if Mercy could have a very small kind of um, golf course cart kind of thing that would travel their path instead, instead of, of trying way. to go up, 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 right, right, down That's and around. A great idea. We're also limiting it because right now what I see, because I live over there as well, so I use that train station. What I see is that it's just the kids not wanting to walk, you know, up to the campus. It's not as very, I haven't seen anybody yeah. with a handicap get on. I'm sure that would be, yeah. that's valid. So one, I think with the path, when the path is completed, we can certainly make the argument that they start reduce the number of shuttles that are zipping around those streets in general. But, you, you know, you raise a good point about trying to limit it, it all right. together. If, if, if it's super cold or super hot or sure. reason why you can't walk right. or you're carrying too many books or right. a baby yes. or I don't know or what, but right. then you have this less um, intrusive small vehicle that could take the path and go that way. Is that allowed to go on our, I don't know what's different right. yet. I don't, I don't know. Okay. It uh, might be practical, but do we know why they started providing shuttle service to begin with? I think it was to go ahead and encourage the people to do transit, rather than transit, yeah, yeah, which yeah, is right. Yeah. Okay. Amen. That's a great, you know, it's a, that's it's a great right. outcome. Now we're going to give you bikes from a ski lift. So we've already, but just let's keep that in mind. That's yeah. eliminated some vehicular traffic, some of which probably would be parking at the tennis courts. So we definitely need to, to, to note that. It's, it's a good thing. It is a good thing. Yeah, but I think, uh, I mean, I found that uh, Mercy's been very responsive to pretty much anything we've asked. I think there's been a big change since they've changed their president. Um, so I think if we ask them to you know, park in a certain area or drop kids off, pick kids off in a certain area with the shuttle, I have to imagine it'll be great. I, I think so. I, I went ahead and separately reached out to Tim Hall on the subject and, you know, he seemed amenable. Just, again, in, in the, the flavor of going ahead and being open-minded towards anything and wanting to be a good neighbor. So we're, we're happy yeah. about that. What about the issues of the shuttle speeding? Yeah. Uh, so uh, Larry went ahead and reported them into the police. He gave me the, the police, you know, non 911 number. And um, we'll keep on. Have you spoken to Mercy? Right? Yes, I did. I immediately after our, our um, I did. Our, our meeting, our general meeting. Yeah. And uh, I think Tim went ahead and, and he really called the shuttle driver. Yeah, that's yeah. much easier than the parking issues. It's, it's, you, you can find out the shuttle driver. Yeah. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. So.
Thank you. Who would be responsible for allotting a, a space for the shuttle to to pick up and drop off that wouldn't interfere with, with traffic or pedestrians? Who's locating it? Right. Who would be responsible for locating I, the market off? Would that be, be the village? Well, or? it's our parking lot. Yeah. So I, I asked the chief to work with Mercy directly to you know, come up with a spot. That is you might even have a generic drop-off area because, you know, I've, been, I've gone down to, like, you, know, you have two people who go to the post office and all those other things. There's no, you can't get through sometimes. Yeah. That's actually a very good idea because this could be a, you know, it's not a huge issue. It doesn't issue. have to right. right. just a shuttle. It could be a pick designated pickup drop drop-off area. Drop drop area for anybody. Yeah, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe we'll expand the one that, that, that's there. Leave one better. Yeah. Okay. Um, parking permits, I know that there are, are some um, residents who have been extremely vocal on, on it and very frustrated with this. Honestly, I've, you probably get a lot of this, but I, I, I'm worried that it, 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 there's maybe a, a tipping point coming up. Um, so I'm probably reminding you something that you, you folks know, and I'm, I'm asking the, uh, the, the, this, this body to go ahead and take a close look at it. I thought the, the easy, and Larry, correct me if I'm wrong, one of the things that you have to call positive action towards is to eliminate multiple permits for a single household, is it, which I thought was uh, the case right now. And I felt that, that under the existing rules and regulation that uh, a single household could have multiple parking permits for the stations. And that, that would be probably a good show of faith and um, there's, there's some out there that, that have seemed to go ahead and make their, their life work in order to go ahead and, and um, conquer this inequity, perceived inequity. Well, I, think, I mean, I think I, I, I know we've, con we've uh, been in contact with some of the, uh, the residents directly, but we've been doing a bunch of different things, including free ticketing, re signage, um, and we think that there's, there's probably going to be um, the ability to issue a few more permits this year. Okay. How many? I'm not sure. It's like I think you can also make the argument if I've been living in Orange Park for 30 years and my wife and I both work and we've had we've paid for our permits all these years, you know, and he goes in at at, at 10 and I go in at 6 a.m. and you know I think you could you know you might be creating a different group of inequities if you do that as well. So um, you know so I, I don't want to take that step if we haven't exhausted okay. everything else. And, and Larry's actually. Been very focused on it for about six weeks or so, or maybe <laughs> longer. Um, but as you're driving down, looking at it, we've actually just changed the um, the way you can pay for the uh, the metered spots. Yes, uh, you can do it on your phone now. Um, you know, so it's it's. Uh, and we're also just seeing how much they're used, how many if any of those slot spots are available. Um, they're full all the time. Yeah, I mean, you look right yeah. there. I mean, yeah. they're yeah. constant. So you know, it's uh, you know, I think you know, we're just kind of do a do a count, like we you know. If we keep seeing a few out by the tennis courts are empty, we can you know look to you know, kind of. What do you do in the summer though, when the tennis courts are full? Mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot less usage during the uh, yeah the yeah, summer, sure. so it all kind of works. It, it does seem to kind of work. Um, you know, we were also going to see if we could figure out a couple more spots or something too. Uh, obviously, we lost ten, I think, Larry, ten yeah. to Hudson House when they took those. Yes, back. So yes. That, that yes. definitely uh, exacerbated the whole situation. Yes. So. But we are working on that, and we hope to have, uh, we hope to be able to, we were also, we just renewed for the year. Yes. How many people didn't renew, um, and we're going to, uh, you know, hopefully have an update on that the next couple of weeks. Well, we hope to carry your message back to our constituency when you guys go ahead and take action. Uh, again, I'm hearing a high level of frustration. I, I know I'm telling you things that you already know. Um, the Mercy College's special permit is up in October of this year. October 13, 2017, um, we'd love to, we were maybe forced or invited, I'm not sure which, to go to be a part of the process. Um, I, I thought that that was, that was good, the way we came together. I think it would be, be better this time. We just love to be a part of the, um, the, the re-permitting of the special permit with, with Mercy going forward. Um, to to the degree where it's appropriate, um, and you know, I know that you you folks have a, all of this protocol set up. But there's there's some things that we, we wanted to go ahead and raise at that time, and um, I know that there's some on our board, and you you know them just as well as I do. Who's very interested in going ahead and seeing what the commitments were in the permit, and how Mercy has done uh, in terms of uh, what their scorecard is.
So I mean, my understanding is those are public meetings. The, the special permit renewals are public meeting at the planning yeah, board. Yeah, they're noticed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So maybe we'll make sure that you guys are. Uh, sure. Now, I don't believe that that um your that that a poll was it like a party to that. It's just that one of the neighbors who was noticed took particular interest. Actually, several of the neighbors who were um, noticed took a particular interest. So I don't think formally there was any. Well, there's rules. I just. Didn't want you to misunderstand that. When the meetings when the meetings are held, they will try to copy you, Nick. Um, Great. Just make sure that you're aware, and then you know, once yeah, you well, attend, once you attend from there is on your own. That's that's fine. <laughs> that's great. Uh, other, we had two two small issues that have recently raised that we have yet to come together as a board to go ahead and discuss. Uh, one is the repeated use of a single family residential property. Uh, use for commercial purposes, and that's as an event space within our neighborhood. So we're just going to go ahead and, and drill down on that, uh, and maybe uh, you know look into that. The other is uh, one that was raised by uh, one of our, our uh, board members, and uh, we wanted to go ahead and raise it to our larger board, and that's the proposed solar guideline rules that eliminate the uh, the architectural review board's ability to deny front-facing solar panels. And I know that's that's before you, uh, and there's, there's draft legislation. Um, we just need to go ahead and stick our hands up in the air about that one and um, let you know that we, we want to go ahead and at least look at it from our side. But uh, I think that all together, we thank you for being active partners and for helping us and um, for keeping this a, a great place to live. How soon would you get back on the solar guidelines? I'm sorry? How soon would you have feedback on the guidelines? Um, I think that I'm going to try to convene our uh, board in the, in the next week or two. What are you guys have legislation that's, that you're going to go ahead and we yeah. vote on? Well, we're, we're, the, the way it was going was we kept the uh, here, public hearing open for an extra uh, until the next regular meeting, which Did is we next week. week. No, next week is the next. And, um, because there were a couple groups that asked to uh, to have time to feed back by it, uh, and the next meeting was the window that they would be able to feed back by. So, um, so let me go ahead and accelerate this. I think so. If we could get something in by next meeting, then that would be helpful. Okay. Even if it's something just people, if you can't get the whole group yeah. together, people right just in. Even two people. I mean, we don't want to want to get your board member to share views. Yes. But, um, if there's other people that okay. feel one way or the other. Right. You know, what day? What's the day of the meeting? Uh, it's Wednesday. Okay. I just want to ask our board at a larger basis. Sure. If that's if you can, can, great. I know one person, did, but, but one person's not the whole board. But, if, but if, uh, you know, if you can't get the whole board, we're happy to take. We frankly, one of the things we're disappointed in is we didn't get feedback yeah. one way or the other Have from, come in from the public. Yeah. Yeah. We want, get, comment. yeah. we want to get the other letters out on the back, and we didn't get either. So. <laughs> great. But also, this has been out there for a while, and it has been, you know, notices have been out there, and if people don't give us feedback and say, oh, but we, we really have something to say, it, 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 it drags it out quite a bit. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if we could try to, now it's a continued public meeting, so get back to us. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I wanted to go back to your uh, parking permit issue, yeah. and it kind of connects to the idea of a shuttle. Um, I know, you know, you just discussed the it seems to me I remember there was some discussion on whether or not the Mercy College shuttle might double up to be used by you guys, residents, don't, of, residents who don't have uh, the permit they need now and might not have for another <coughs> year or two years. Or, um, but then it occurred to me, you know, within your own organization, I have no idea what the cost of this would be, but have you ever considered um, <coughs> Hiring a driver and mm -hmm. getting a van and being a pickup service for your own community. That if it gets desperate enough, um, you know, I, yeah, you know, it we, it might be a solution. That, 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 I don't think there's anything that the village would care that you would do that. Um, you know, like a good part-time job for yeah. the right. students. Or right. Yeah. I thought you were suggesting Nicholas for him. Nicholas, yes, 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 yes. Right. you need some <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it, 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 yeah, to think outside the box. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The need to get people from point A to point B. Right. Right. You know, we can do this end, but. Yeah. yeah, if it's 
every day. If it's a desperate enough issue, and we can't, as much as we're trying desperately to find ways to have more spots, and you just said there might be a few, um, which I have heard, but yeah, that's that's nice. But what is how many people are on the list? I don't know. On your seventy. Yeah. 70. So if sixty people have a very desperate need to get to the station um, and they can't drive there and park the car and for whatever reason they can't walk. Um, I mean, it's not my problem to solve it away, but I've just been thinking about shuttles in the village for about nine years now um, and thinking could we solve some of our Main Street problems with a uh, you know, a clean energy vehicle. Um, obviously, people's behavior has to change, but, and it probably doesn't change unless it's a desperate situation. Right. This might be desperate. So, so speaking about change behavior, this is off yeah. topic. I was surprised. I was coming across uh, the sidewalk over here, crosswalk. I was over by the uh, ambulance, yeah. and I guess I was spaced out because I wasn't paying attention. Listen, I. Uh, a car honked at me. Both cars had stopped on both sides. And you, of and you were and waiting. So you like, go. It's like in space somewhere. Yeah. It's like, oh, oh, you're. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the. That's a. That's that a was surprising. <laughs> now act like a pedestrian. Yeah. Get across. Right, right, no. right. That's the next one. Oh, pedestrians, be aware. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways. But it never happens to me. I have to stand there and go like oh, this. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, that's what took me by such surprise. Oh. They know you're part of that committee. So. Well, thanks, Nick and Claire. Good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks for your time. Good ideas. I think that was, that was great. Audience. Great. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, okay. Yeah, and, uh, you know, obviously never have to hesitate to contact us, but. Yeah, no, we, we feel very comfortable. Thank you for going ahead and, and making, attending and, and fitting in and inserting yourself in our group. It, it makes it all that real and gives us validity. So we, we're very grateful. Thank you. Thank so, you. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, I mean, I guess just contextualize it. I really like the idea of trying to restore this walking path or biking path or whatever it may be, if it's actually legend in some way that's that's just paint. But maybe also when Greg or whoever's looking at the street lights, he can look at it from that angle as well, like to keep that illuminated properly. Great, thank you. Is there space to do one of those um, on the kind of pictures of a pedestrian walking along? A shadow, shallow. What do you, what do you call them? Yeah, the silhouettes yeah. that are on the pavement yeah. right. to yeah. make it. You know, they they're kind of reflecting. Right. But I have a question. Right. If I know exactly what yeah. my daughter yeah. yeah. <laughs> If you are walking with traffic, are you supposed to be on the left? The right. We're supposed to walk opposite. Basically, twenty-nine coming out. So the track is one way. Oh. Yeah. So. Well, well, it's, it's, no, it's, 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 it's going the avenue way. west. Yes. And it is it's two ways. Two ways. The so tennis courts. Uh, you're you're talking about Hudson oh, well, West. Okay, so Hudson West, where there is also that path. So. Aren't they having to become one way? So yes, it point? does become The loop is one way. Yeah, the loop, okay. Basically, so the loop, the loop from, from yes. is it Clinton? Is that's it? right. Clifton. That's right. Clifton. That's right, Clifton. But from Clifton down to the train station up to Clifton. Yeah. So okay. if it's one way traffic, what side should the pedestrians be on? I don't know the answer to this question. Oh, yeah. Whichever side so is right. right. <laughs> Whichever yeah. side is right. Whichever side is cars are not. Yeah, because if you're walking the other, you, you could walk the other way, right? Yeah. Actually, you could be yeah. going counterclockwise. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you could, but if you're trying to catch a train, you're going to be walking. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, but, but there are going to be people. Anyway, I, have to, I think that the, the lines might be on the wrong side is the problem. Oh. Just, it's on the left. Just yes, it is on the, on the left or the okay. south side. I mm -hmm. guess in, in terms of one street, streets, you're probably, I mean, my take would be it's probably wherever you've got the grass. Space. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. So just, okay. Uh, Meeting with the library board to review Burnham Building condominium. That's a couple of familiar faces. Do we have another chair? Mm -hmm. Put you to work. Hey, Chris. Okay.
Is it not fine? You're going to be elevated. Okay. Okay. In your life, this is your ago, he indicated that they're anticipating that the transfer of ownership will go over toward the end of March. And um, in, prior to that, we need to review setting up the condominium board of managers, which has not been done in the 17 years that we've been a condominium, um, as well as discussing um, the oversight of the, the management of the common elements, as well as the billing for the common elements because um, he has indicated repeatedly that they do not feel that the library should bear, you know, necessarily the burden of the 37% that we bear now for some of the repairs that they can make for, you know, for their, their, tax, tax for their right, 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 exactly. So, so which, for us. which is, <laughs> so, um, so anyway, that, that's the purpose of our meeting before you today. Okay. Yeah, thanks for the, uh, the comprehensive letters. I always expect well-written letters from the library group. But, uh, <laughs> these are, these are I have great they, support staff. I'll just <laughs> put it that way. Uh, I mean, I think it really uh, gave us a great background on kind of somewhat complicated, potentially complicated issues. Um, so, I mean, I don't think we want to take the, I think, kind of the easier ones. Um, I think on the uh, the costs. I mean, maybe you guys want to tell me what, what yeah. you're thinking rather than jumping ahead. <clears throat> well, John Warren has indicated that for some of the expenses that we are looking at in the immediate future, such as repairing the second Joyce in the children's room, that um, that they would cover 100% of those. Um, what kind of choice the Saggy. 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 Saggy.
that will be set aside to cover the maintenance and repair for the next 15 years, because these limited partnerships normally only have about a 15-year life. And while they may be willing to pick up 100% of the initial work, I'm sure that for the ongoing work, they will want to revert back to the more standard. Now, I don't know whether that percentage is negotiable or not. Uh, but so uh, the one thing that he stressed at our meeting was that they're going to need about a three months lead time on this. And I assume that means because they have to work this out with their limited partners who will probably have their own attorney reviewing all of this. Um, and also to get, I guess, the work scope agreed and the work underway. Uh, I don't know exactly when they intend to do that. And they're bringing in a new manager, uh, which will be a very blessing from our point of view because the manager we have now is probably not what you would call five star. Uh, and they're bringing in uh, a, a national manager of Witten out of Boston who manages 200,000 units <coughs> around the country. Uh, so the first part of what we were thinking was just to alert you to the fact that this has to be looked at and <coughs> we need some guidance from, from you fellas as to um, should we pick the architect or do we just go with Steve Tilke? Should we pick the overseer? Do you want to do it? Does the village want to do it? How, how is that going to work? And the, the institutional, um, in effect, um, energizing that we're suggesting that is the, the, the naming of our condominium board of managers would assist us to handle all these questions. Uh, uh, negotiation of cost sharing now and later oversight um, than the, the host of, of practical questions that we know from more than a decade of experience um, simply comes up and if, it, if it's handled um, in a, in, a, uh, in a timely way, in a constructive way, that everybody is um, ahead both in providing the best service through the building and also saving money <coughs> on tackling uh, construct, including con construction questions um, before the costs begin to escalate. So um, the, the, these, these detailed points about how the costs are going to be allocated and so forth can uh, not resolve themselves, but can be addressed in a straightforward, uh, workable way um, if we have the board of managers to to uh, create that link. We have the chance now to, in effect, to um, for a reset of our relationship with the housing unit because the limited partnership owner is changing hands. So that's a very positive thing, and the uh, we've. Had a good impression of workforce and work go on that. So to connect this with Robert, it's like immediate action, you're talking about at least two things, one of which is constitute the board, managing board, uh, which I think one of the letters provided kind of an outline of a two or four member type. That was the most recent, yes. Yeah. And the second thing sounds like some sort of oversight on the proposed design uh, rehabilitation process or design documents for that, uh, so the village could have uh, an, uh, its own best interest uh, represented. Yeah. So those, those to me sound like the most immediate asks. But, but yeah. yeah, yeah. I just want to be sure that we're focused on. And did you discuss the idea of them of having four versus two on the county board? Yeah. 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 Was, he was amenable. To, he thought it was a good idea to have a condominium board because um, he would like their managers to be involved too. And he understands the problem we've had where uh, in the past what would happen is we would suddenly discover that some work had been done. <coughs> nobody had even seen the specs and nobody had seen the way it was done. When our man took a look at it, he said, you know, that's terrible work. And, and, and so we never knew whether we were getting our money to them, which is and these people seem to be quite straightforward. I'll say this. Yeah, yeah I, I would echo that. I was at that, um, that meeting. I was really very pleasantly, not surprised, but impressed. I've been impressed, yeah. Very impressed with it. Very forthright, very clear that they really wanted to take the lion's share of the get it started, get it set up, and let's work together to help make it better going forward. Exactly. Uh, the other thing, of course, is it's got all slipped because, uh, but he seemed fairly confident 
that they would work out whatever problem they're having in Yonkers, which has been much hoping there's up. They've done everything else, every other piece of Graceland. And, uh, but Yonkers is Yonkers, and, uh, and they had some problem with the county also. But I think he, he was hopeful. But we haven't heard from him uh, yet. Uh, and the architect did come through again, didn't he? Yes, they, they did another another walkthrough. Yes. And they Apparently, were, it's a very yeah. They have they okay. have a very uh, and I can't remember its its initials. It's like OCB or something. Um, but they specialize in historic building renovation, which is really nice, you know, for us. Surprising. I guess they want to spend money, right? Well, they, they buy a lot of old buildings and they renovate them. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I can just say that, you know, I've been on the board for eight, nine years at this point, somewhere in that range. I've had three meetings with Grayston. I've had three meetings with John Warren in the last year. I mean, he's very much, you know, hand, you can tell he's a hands-on, you know, partner. Um, and he's very, you know, very responsive on Grayston, and certainly unlike the management company, <coughs> I still haven't heard from him in weeks. Um, we don't want to give the management company the check that we owe them until they give us the check that they owe us, but we can't get hold of them. Uh, <laughs> and the person we we're dealing with is no longer with the company, and nobody will respond to Rosemary's request for who the replacement is. So. We're so we're holding checks. Yep. So yeah. would, that's what you do. Would the the condominium board do the negotiating as to what the new percentages were and what would be picked up 100 percent, or would that be the village administration? Or there's a I think there's a host of open questions about how the board would actually function. But the, well, on, on this issue, of, that's not really the answer. To that. I, I think um, it would be the village, frankly. On, on the issue that you brought up about their architectural firm, uh, it, it, when you when you have a chance, I'd be interested in the in the name. But I would um, I would say that from what I've heard so far, if we have the option of keeping Steve Tilly involved, who knows you know our perspective, I would certainly you know be a voice to say. Oh, well, I think no, I, no, I think I think we definitely. would want to have him. Um, and that would be a good match if they're both arguing. Right. Both but actually, the person who is the most hands-on from C. Tilly's office has left the firm and is now in White Plains. Mm -hmm. But he's the one that knows that he knows our building, building inside yeah, and out, the Kowalski. Yeah. So, and Rosemary ran into him and he said he'd be happy to, you know, he's on very, he left on very friendly terms with, with Steve, who's thinking of retirement now. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that might be the person to be our go-to contact because he he was the one that was most involved when we've had all these yeah. major issues over the last that's, few years. That's an important detail. So, yeah. But it, obviously, Steve puts his um, stamp of approval on right. that arrangement. I see fine with it. I, I just know his involvement from the early days is, and you know the historical knowledge uh, of what's happened and hasn't happened with that building is a lot of it's in his head. Um, so, so I don't have, yeah, go ahead. I'm just wondering, again, you know, is this, I mean, obviously, is this, a, you know, you're not going to get the architectural services for free, I assume. So it's going to be either a, a hourly or a, con, or a mm -hmm. project based fee. Right? Yeah. But do we have any sense of what the scope of that is? That's what an architect would charge to be in the middle of the review process? Steve Tilly charges about $300 an hour. Yeah. An hour. Well, how many hours we don't know. Yeah, and Bob Kozalski was billed at about a hundred, about half, about hundred and sixty, and he was really the one who came. You know, who's come the most in the past because he certainly knows that. What I thought was because this is all related to capital improvements, that so whatever the cost is would be offset and come out of the bond proceeds yeah. that are sitting here. The bond proceeds. Well, we, we have a bond of one hundred and fifty thousand dollars that we took out to make improvements to the building because we have a lot of infrastructure issues. It's a, I think my, my take is that all of these um, requests are reasonable and you know makes sense on the face of them. I think working out the details um, probably between all of you and you know probably Larry um, you know with the condo board uh, as well as with you know I think the design oversight is a no-brainer. I mean, it would be 
completely foolish. I yeah, think. Right, let's, let's, so, let's see what we get. Right. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you know, but I think it's figuring out you know potential costs, figuring out the actual arrangement of the best people are. If you if you would do also the construction, or do want to use our engineers, whatever. Um, but I think those are all details that you know. I think Larry can you know look at the details, figure out the costs, figure out any of the area issues that we might have to opine on, and. Uh, and move forward, but you know, I think that uh, I guess we've been lucky that they're holding up in Yonkers. Um, this gives us a little time, and we can we can we can be ready for when they're ready. So if it's March, you know, I think that you know we can we can figure out all the intricacies of each one of these things and, and come up with uh, both solutions by March. So. I mean, this to me it looks like the proverbial win-win situation, or can be. It can be. Yeah, sure. right. We uh, want to make sure that we capitalize the W on our side of things, but um, to go back a bit to the issue we were talking about before, I think it should definitely be, if the village is going to be paying these costs, that, that should be the village's attorney, Larry, very, very deeply involved in, in this negotiation and figuring out how this is going to work. Well, and also the village attorney, because the, uh, yes, the, yes. the yes. underlying documents have to be amended. Yes. And from, from my understanding, having a board of managers going forward would be for after this is all in place to have a group that can review maintenance needs and so on as they arise and determine priorities. And so it's, that, that's a little bit more to day to day operations. Absolutely. And, and quarterly meetings, basically, because you know, what we discover is every time we have a meeting, we have another. Right. Yes. Hopefully, we get rid of some of them. <laughs> and, and the issue, of course, has been that they've always hired their outside people to come in. We've had no involvement. Yeah. And then the prime example was was the roof with the skylight has always leaked. And um, we hired the top roofing consultant in Westchester to come in, and he said it wasn't even done correctly. So. Which happens if there's no oversight. Right. Yeah. You know. It's so it's problem. double work, double money. Right. Right. But when, when this building has a problem, who do you call on to take a look at it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> hardware. It's very well built. <laughs> That's why we have scaffolding up for the last time. Holding it up. Yeah, we can't take a tap. <laughs> well, we must cover Tiffany. <laughs> yeah. Actually, Jim, Jim English um, is responsible for this building in the fifth bit. And he has a stable of contractors that he deals with when needed. I mean, is there any reason why we shouldn't have access to those same people for consistency? No. I mean, you know, because, you know, we wind up having a problem and we're kind of scrambling to find who can come in and, right. you know. Yeah, I think we can do a better coordination, you know, and I think part of it was the, the, the perception that there was this outside company that was, that was kind of calling the shots in some ways, that if we can change that, that tone and, you know, bring it, you know, the library back kind of under more village control, for lack of a better term, or, or village input anyway. Village uh, wing. Yeah, under the wing. Um, then, yeah, those things can be a lot easier. Great. So, uh, Larry, you see, that would be, you see that as feasible, that we have the same stable of contractors that the library can use, and that would actually probably be helpful because we're dealing with known entities and two old buildings. <laughs> right, well, but if you're talking about from the condo level or from the library level, there's the condo level, you know, there's another side of the table that's going to have to say over what contractors you hire. So it's not as simple as us making a decision here, you know. As far as what contractors work within your space, that's certainly what comes right. to you. Okay. But contractors that deal with common elements that the condominium board would be responsible for are not just within our control. Okay. Conceptually. But they might say, hey, good idea. These local yeah. people that you already know. And, right. yeah, and if they're easier to deal with, they might be much more open to it rather than the lowest bidder you know, at the end of the well, that's, years. Well, that's been an issue because we have to pay prevailing wage, and the management company doesn't. And so they're that's one of the hiring. Open questions on the condo level. Yeah. So, you know, so they've hired, they bring in all these people that I have no idea. You know, we have no idea what they're getting paid, but we've noticed that the level of quality is definitely not consistent. 
So. But sometimes they still get paid a lot, and no one's overseeing them. I found. Right. <laughs> well, and we don't know until we get our common charges, sure. which are no twice a year, and you get them three to four months after yeah, the fact, and mind. all of a sudden you're looking at you know a roofing bill of you know a skylight bill of twelve thousand yeah. dollars that we had no input into, other than hiring our own consultant. So know, what this management board idea, I, I, I know you mentioned the liaison as being one of the people, which happens to be Janice right now. At the moment. Right. At the moment. It would be the role, not the role. <laughs> right. um, <laughs> would this take some burden off of the library board? Do we assume that this, Matt, that you wouldn't have to deal with some of these things when you well, be monthly? You know, I mean, if, if there's a representative from the library board. Right. To, and to the village board, and the village board, then you know that, that would definitely. person. But your meetings, your monthly meetings, wouldn't have to be dominated by repairs. No, and, and to the degree I, that the work became more orderly, yes. exchange of information became right. The it communication would just, was done. across the table yeah. with, with, with the housing sector. Um, we could um, really. Pick not spend as much, nearly as much time, hopefully, uh, figuring out, sort of, strategizing to get across that breach, right. um, which takes a, a lot of energy and, and, and it's just wasted motion, but uh, we have to keep jumping across that gap. But to a large extent, many of the <coughs> many of the things we deal with on an MNR basis are strictly within the library, so they're not common elements, so the other people aren't involved. It's only when we get. Oh. It's only. So it's only still be. Yeah, it's only when we get, you know, the toilet leaking over uh, oh. the book the fire. and, and <laughs> the fires and, and the, the roof leaking, things like that. But, uh, which, uh, well, maybe after this big investment by the investors, the capital investment, these new, the new. HVAC, the new choice, all this thing won't need as much maintenance because it'll be spanking new. What do you think? That's the goal. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on whether or not they give it to the low bidder. <laughs> and you always get to making sure that there's enough of a financial um, buffer behind it. So inevitably, things yeah. do not work perfectly. The, the arrangement itself is a little peculiar, right? We don't know all the details, but uh, the actual owner is going to remain the same. Uh, it's still going to be the grace and whatever it is, and they're somehow behind the scenes they're doing, they're getting the beneficial ownership. And uh, I swear, if tax goes this big, yeah. and so uh, <laughs> uh, I don't think we need to get into that. Right. It's, it's, it's going to be you know, these are very complex transactions. So, so Larry, um, kind of pros and cons of, of and figure out the issues with each each element there. Account of work, uh, design oversight. Um, yeah, well, it's too big us. Right, I mean, I have the design oversight. I mean, the next step on that, as far as I'm concerned, is getting a uh, set of draft plans to the consultant of your choice yeah. so that they can make a proposal on that for review of those plans and then oversight during construction. But you may not have draft plans yet, so it's kind of in a holding pattern until until those plans are more. Yeah, done. but I can I can certainly send John Warren an email and ask him for a copy of them when, and at least when they're available. And at least you'll be able to get a budget number on that. Um, so that's the first step. And then, you know, as far as the condo board goes, um, I, I have a short list of open questions that need to be dealt with. It's like you already touched on some of them, one uh, including prevailing wage civil service restrictions, depending on whether you employ someone, and uh, procurement rules, bidding procedures, things like that, that we'd have to look at, but that doesn't mean it can't happen, it just has to we have to answer those questions. Why does the issue of, um, if I'm understanding you right, would the issue of prevailing wage be some bar to actually appointing the condo board of managers? No, but it, it would be a, a factor that the other party, the housing, would need to know about going in. If if the village must enter into, if we're a party to a contract, even though it's the condo board, but we're essentially one half of that, um, if we're a party to a contract, it has to be a prevailing wage. So 
that may be a limiting factor and cause the housing to also need to enter into contracts that are prevailing wage. From coming out of the common board. I, I that's not for tonight. This has got to be limited. It needs to be looked at. That's all I'm saying. That yeah, hasn't I, occurred I would say yet. In the line of experience that, that having the condo board would enable us to, to frame and address that question rather than the reverse. Um, so the, 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 condo, the condo board, once in existence, can tackle that, that question. That's um, who are they going to use to tackle it? Our village attorney. Hmm? <laughs> I, I don't know. Since we're already paying for half the cost, or 38% or whatever that percentage is, strikes me it's almost exactly the same situation. They do the work and we just pay them. But I don't think condominium itself would be um, ordering the work on the common elements. I think it's going to be the management company out of Boston. Yeah, we, we can answer these questions. Yeah, so that's a, it's a question. We don't know right. the answer. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think sure. whatever question, I think the yeah. questions that are open, we need to yeah. figure Absolutely. out yeah. so that we're not jumping the gun with setting up a board that becomes like unable to deal with certain issues or constrained to deal with issues in a certain way that you're not anticipating as we go into it. It is a little bit um, peculiar to have a whole set of documents that when you look at the condominium and has all these specific requirements and for the condominium board and bylaws and everything else and totally ignored, which is a little hot. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> What was that? What was else on your list? Or did you, oh. So this two or four is that an important differentiation, or it's not? Just work to share, I think, right? Load yeah. share. Yeah, and I mean, you know, another another set of eyes. I mean, you know, that representing makes, both the village and the library yeah, rather than nice. one yeah. or the other. Right. Yeah. You no, know, because really good. <clears throat> you know, this is a you know, it's a very important part of, of the village, and I wouldn't want, you know, either side left out. I mean, so. So, Janice, you were, are, are you like, as the first person in this role, are you okay with this? I oh, yeah, in, in general, I think it's a very good idea, with the caveat that I think there are questions that need to be asked and resolved before. Huh. Um, nobody, we don't want to set this up and find out that now nobody has any control here. You don't do, we don't, so, you know, let, let's make sure that we, you know. I think I, with just very broad strokes, I see that uh, the condominium board is having a very specific mandate to deal with the ongoing prioritization of issues for maintenance. Uh, not making the, 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 the big box decisions about what the, what the, you know, the design elements, having some input perhaps, but I think a lot of these questions have to be dealt with first. Well, you know, I, I don't know how to answer that. Um, somebody has to make a decision about the design elements for the condominium, right? Um, the library is not an owner of the villages. Uh, we only occupy village space. And, uh, um, so, uh, I don't think it's a condominium board is going to do it. I think it's, you know, whoever the builders yeah. decides to, to do it. Exactly. Yeah. The, uh, and in terms of what the condominium board would do, would you take, I mean, your lawyer, village lawyer, well, I'm sure take a look at the condominium documents and decide whether or not uh, the mandates that are in there should be changed. That's fine. I think what we ought to try to do is conform the reality to the documents and the documents to the reality. <clears throat> so again, so I think, uh, I think we know where we're going, and I don't think it should be uh, a long process. I thought we had some water stuff. Thanks for having so far away. <laughs> 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 That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's no, uh, no snow. <laughs> down, uh, well, thank you very much, guys. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
here because Larry and I talked about that because we don't want you saying no I don't think that oh, right, you know, right. my wife should be honored because she's terrible in a public meeting so what I think what we'll do there is we'll have a um, I'll make next Wednesday it's our next meeting and it's a long weekend uh, the kind of deadline for submitting potential names for each subcommittee if you feel that this doesn't mean that they've agreed or that we've even no. mentioned it to them. No, but just, just, a, just a list of names. Okay. Mm -hmm. just, so the process by which people are going to be um, identified for these committees by us? Uh, this, this, I think it's by the, uh, this, this group, the group here. So, so then, then, so then, so then the, the idea was we would have a public meeting where we would introduce to the public. Yes. Okay, hold on. <laughs> we're jumping ahead. <laughs> no, you're right. You're, you're right. right. But there were names. There were yeah. like, you sent around a list. Oh yeah. Ten. That was just the start conversation. Oh, so the, where did those names come from? You? Larry's yeah. brain. Oh, Larry's brain. Oh, oh. 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 the cavernous sides of the area. Ah, oh. oh. brain. Right. Right. Okay. All the people that that gave you a problem about issues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not supposed to. That's and the third thing is, is the uh, timeline review. So okay. before we go anywhere. And, and actually, the so the question that Larry was just getting at uh, about. Uh, the order of events and how the meetings are going to be held, that's actually answered in the timeline when we get there. So that's that's what it's sort of mean by jumping ahead. You didn't know we'll that. have a copy of that. Oh, I, I have one yeah. yeah. okay. 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 So, so anyway, back to the first, first step. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Formalizing the, uh, the committee. Um, I think you know, we discussed the, the members of the overall committee, um, <coughs> which was the board of trustees, the, the chairman or his designee of the planning board, zoning board, and um, ARE. Um, I think all three chairs actually accepted as on their on their on their own. Bruce couldn't be here tonight, um, but he also accepted. Um, so I think our board, or our board, our, our committee is pretty much set. So uh, I think it's everyone we want. So <laughs> thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for that. Jumping on, on board. <laughs> That's the easy part. <laughs> I mean, do we have to actually make a motion or something for that? Or? No, I don't think so. Yeah. No. Okay. We just need, we need to announce who's going to be on the comp plan committee. So, if you do that at the first meeting, yeah. um, yeah, so, uh, it, I realize it might seem like a formality, but we did, we did only talk about it in generalities, and at the last meeting, you know, the mayor and, and the board agreed, oh, let, let's see if, you know, we'll have this as a committee, and, and so this kind of just formalizes the fact that these um, three folks, as well as the board of trustees, have all agreed to uh, be the conference plan committee, so that's takes care of that. Uh, so no, no motion involved with that. Um, as far as the members of the working groups, uh, <coughs> you already outlined that we'll, we'll gather some names. If you want to send those, we can send them to everyone, but make sure that they get sent to me and I'll you know, parse them all. Um, and how you vet them, I'm not sure yet. We'll, we'll, we'll get there, but let's at least gather them so we get so we get names together. So, But to Larry's point, there's still 
This isn't a final list of people working. No. This is just an initial seed list for the sun. That's right. This is an initial list, and then uh, the, the intention that we all talked about at the meeting was that at our kickoff meeting or initial um, public yeah. public meeting, there would be information disseminated about the, the work that each of the working groups needs to do. Of course, we we hope to have you know many of the working group members there that, that have already agreed or at least that are on the list but you may also have other people that are interested after hearing what you have to say uh, who, who would express interest in, in joining the committee so that's that's what the plan is and, and do you express interest that you want or does the plan committee well, do we have an idea how how large no, I don't think these subgroups to be yeah. you know is there a point where it becomes a level or we certainly want a certain number so if people can't make a meeting we can still get things done. I think that's part of the discussion that you would you want to have. You know, is it at least three or is it up to eleven? I mean, you know, it, I think no. part of it is having yeah. five, yeah. five, 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 five or six seems like a nice number. That's what I think. Three to five, maybe six if there's someone. Back With the board member being at perhaps the six, so three to five for community people. Yeah. Right. I think the plan. Um, well, let me answer one question first. Uh, Mary, Marianne's question was, if you express interest, are you automatically on? And I think the answer is no. No. Um, that you all have to. That you might have. Coverage. The plan committee needs to needs to parse through the names and have an opportunity to do that. And I'm sure that can be done offline, so as not to have public discussions about that. But then just, uh, you know, do, do some of the research back behind the scenes and um, yeah. you know, come together on the name. So um, you, you want, obviously you want uh, not just uh, you know, good dedicated people, but you also want opposing points of view on the various working groups, because I think you need to, at least I feel, you need to generate a, you know, a pretty good um, cross-section of views. And, and that was my comment about you. Well, yeah, and yeah. Well, then you have opposing. <laughs> yeah. Right. So and you want a limit on the number, too. <laughs> yeah, you don't want a wall opposing. You don't want a No, no, no. You want a limit on the number. If you have 18 people who say we're interested in historic things, it's not going to work. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, no, no. Certainly. Right. <laughs> 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 so pe basically, people are not volunteering for this. We are generating. We'll be appointing this names and then we will appoint based on the names and, that we generate and others may express interest but then you you appoint as a group just not not just the village board but the, right. committee, the whole committee okay. yes uh, so, appoints members to the working group so well unless you want to put it out to the public too, yeah. if people are interested yeah. i mean that's yeah. how i got on it the first time Back in the 80s. No, you were definitely going to have a look for We'll definitely have a, a public <laughs> component to it, but again, we don't want to have, you know, I mean, you know, the, 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 the chance that we have, you know, 25 people you know, sign up for any one is probably low. Um, right. And I think we lean towards, you know, if there's if there's one room we might have a seventh member, maybe we do that to, you know, if it, if, yeah, you know, it's still fair. Yeah, if we're asking people yeah. to express an interest, that's not guaranteeing that. Right, that's, that's, right. that's, yeah. that's the way the uh, yeah. Board of Education did the uh, Fields Committee. Yeah. 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 Round up. Yeah, you open it up and you get a list of people and you choose who you want. So will, will, will you guys be able to formulate a general letter that can be specifically sent to to individuals that we might think might have a general interest, inviting them to come to this yes. meeting, as opposed to you know, speaking to an individual person that we specifically think would be on a specific committee. Right. No, I think it's more of an invitation. Right. And see, if, and then you know, hopefully you get a, some sort of expression that they're interested at some point, and that'll be on, they'll be on your list of uh, people to consider. I think part of that letter may want to consider having our here's. If you're interested, here's your responsibility and it requires attendance at meetings. Yeah, and right. You kind of started to frame out how that may happen. So yeah, they and say additionally, the actual working groups, you know, something will you know, be more important to other people. Yeah. Well, I think the idea that the invitation would say that we're talking about a focused time frame and a focused number of meetings is going to generate more yeah. interest than, yeah. Yeah. than an open news is great segmentation potential timelines. I think it helps, <laughs> I think it helps frame a lot of this. And, uh, yeah. Before we go ahead, I have to bring up, even though I hate to bring this up because it's another shared email thread, I do wonder, is this, are these subcommittees under the auspices of the ethics code? 
because I think that if, if, if it's going to create a severe limitation for a lot of people, especially professionals that actually, like some of these names continually appear before active boards of which you guys are chair. Well, and so I think it's, we have to decide what that means in terms it, of. It will be a very limited, I think we're thinking, you know, a month to six weeks, but I know, I, I yeah. We'll discuss it. Well, I mean, if, it's, if it truly is as, as limited in duration as we're talking about, it doesn't mean that they're the conference of plan committee. It goes from start to finish in the project, but the working group people are, we think, a pretty limited window here. So we could we might be able to get around that by narrowing it. Our town plan committee is already found. Is there well, only yeah, one there board, so that's irrelevant. Yeah. It's only the, it's the working committee. Yeah, it's the, yeah. it's the working group. Yeah. Yeah. So just, uh, is this okay. not, it's something we should think about ahead of time because it might influence what names we put on the list. Yeah, I agree with you. I think, you, yeah, you got to be careful with that. The people who are constantly coming before the board because they're professionals in the field, for them to be on these subcommittees, I don't know, I think that, Sort of constitutes some sort of a conflict of interest here. Well, it would literally, uh, <clears throat> probably by the reading of the code. But my concern is just again, it's also those people that have the expertise to be able to, in certain areas, <laughs> you know, to uh, a lot of provide yeah. yeah. yes. right. I think you got to balance it because you, you have, you've hired Dave Smith, mm -hmm. right? So you have a professional planner who's sort of guiding everything, right. and, and I think. The idea of these subcommittees is to have some citizen participation in sure. this and not, not just professionals in it. So I think it's good if you do get people who don't have the background in it. I, I was like the same thing with any of the boards. I think it's good that you get a cross section of people. They don't have to be professionals in the particular field in which the board is involved because you want somebody else's opinion and you want an outsider's opinion in it too. So I think that, that's helpful. I, I agree insofar as they don't, there's there may be some of these things that are a little bit more technical than not. I mean, I don't mean literally, you know, nuts and bolts kind of technical, but some kind of greater. So there, if someone had a professed interest in this area and had maybe done their own, you know, something they were doing on their own, so to speak, then they would be appropriate, but they would probably be self, uh, what is it? Uh, they would be drawn to a particular subcommittee because that's their interest. Yeah. Sure. So that's what you would hope. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But because I brought this up, because when I look at some of these names, some of these names are active, well, especially under code modernization. Uh, <laughs> I noticed that. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And well, even under downtown working group, there's certain names uh -huh. that are. But the, I think the, the, the conundrum is that these are the people who know what doesn't work in the codes or what they perceive to not work in the codes. That's the trade off. And that's. Right. That's the trade off. I mean, I'm, I, I was, you know, fully on board with what he was saying, and, and frankly, I find myself saying, you know, we, we really don't want to totally shut those people out. We want to hear what they have to say, but, you know, we have to take from, from what's again. But can't the working committee, they're going to have several meetings, can't the, the, the working committee yeah. invite them in to talk well, that's about the way it. Around it? Yeah, that's the right. way around it. I that seems to not be the better yeah. way to do it. Yeah, I think that that's You have the first way. meeting where you identify it, maybe at the second meeting you have yeah, the people in that you know, not particularly. Yeah, textiles, come on in. <laughs> yeah. just, just to play with that idea a little bit on a different tangent, if if the working group people have conflicts that we're talking about as possible that they come in front of the boards, aren't, isn't the final acceptance of the comprehensive plan changes up to us? Sure. They're giving us some input, but they're not deciding anything. They could talk and take a position, and it comes back to us. We're the committee, and we say, you know, thank you for your input, but you know the final the final decision is ours. I'm not saying that you know all of us here don't um, very very much value input from every citizen out there. But in terms of the responsibility for the final plan, it's ours, and maybe that has an impact on whether or not it's ethical or not. It's almost not that different than yeah. came to the public meeting yeah. and, and spoke right. up. And spoke so up. You know, they're just in the, each working group is an advisory group. Uh, 
but it's a duly constituted advisory group as a function of the village. That's it's not different, different than having witnesses or experts come in to talk. Yeah. See, that's it. I okay. think that well, we'll, we'll get through this. I'll leave it to Marianne to. <laughs> yeah, I, you know what? I have to look at this yeah. part, but you know what? I don't think it's a problem. Remember, one of the big changes we made to the code was all of the ethics provisions applied to all the boards, and it made no sense <coughs> to apply to people on the library board and whatever. And we limited it to so that yeah. the higher restrictions applied only to, to you, to the planning board, the ARB, and the, and the zoning board. So I think it probably, I mean, there's some things you're not going to be able to do, but just kind of basic ethics, like you can't take gifts, you uh -huh. can't, you know. But I, I'll look at it again. I don't believe it would be okay. a problem. Okay, now, okay. It would have been under the code before we just changed it. See, one thing that bothers me, but I, mean, I understand what you're going at with this, and that's probably <coughs> true as well, but what bothers me is that comprehensive plan committee and working groups are not a land use sort of uh, function. I mean, it's sort of, you know, I know it's like ad hoc that it comes together for, you know, no, but the comp, plan, the comp plan committee is all bound by the ethics code because they're all on the all other course. Us. You're only talking about the working groups, Mark, because you're already, okay. anybody on it is bound by the the, the rules that apply so to the a, higher boards anyway. So, so look at the, the, the subgroup to that, the, yeah. the least covered, I guess. All right. Right. The regular volunteer. I have a feeling it won't be an issue, but we'll look at it in the, you know, okay. after this is done. So should we start talking timeline? Yeah, so let me pass that over here. Oh, it's different than the guy. Oh, I don't know if you have a copy of it, right? Um, I don't have a copy of it. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's an effective working group. Okay. Here's the record. What's it? Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, so, uh, well, as of tonight, we're right on schedule. <laughs> you should be like a week behind. Yeah, right. right. Um, we, we, do, we, we, did, we did put down a, at the next meeting to take uh, a brief time to uh, really get an outline together for the, for the first public meeting. Um, I'm sure Dave can you know, prepare something for you yes. to have in front of you, but, um, and then also discuss the larger context of public outreach uh, for that meeting, which I think um, we're pretty, pretty used to. Let's check the date. Yeah, right. That's the fourth vacation week, I believe. It is, right? yes. February 16th is yes. right before the uh, train break. Yeah. It's President's Day. Right. The, the, the yeah, Thursday, following Monday. Yeah, Thursday right. February 16th. It's not Valentine's Day either. <laughs> so it's the day after our board meeting? After your work session. We have a work session on the 15th, right. And this is called Comprehensive Plan Public Meeting. Right? Yes. The first of the public meetings. Now, is that going to go into the um, village calendar so we could get up or do we get up? Oh, yeah. Yeah, with these all get calendar. Yeah, I think so. Um, how the working groups get calendar, I'm not sure. Yeah, but this is the um, main public watch. Yes. Yeah, Are you looking at 7, 7 p.m.? 7 o'clock, I think. Okay. Yeah. If, I mean, that's, unless you have any objections to that. Um, so then the, the next section. Um, Let's see, uh, I'll have you put a bracket around the three lines here, I believe. Uh, okay, so the next section uh, for the next three lines, uh, where we have the first working group meeting, and then we have March to April working group meetings, and then we have early to mid-April a final working group meeting. You can kind of figuratively put a bracket around those three lines. That's and just the time frame for the work. That's the time frame only for the working group. So the way the way uh, we looked at this is almost like, well, first of all, we all felt, and you probably would too, uncomfortable about having five working groups 
with the possibility that they have to meet that they have to meet three times. You know, we talked about three meetings, they might, you know, over a period of time. So that's potentially 15 separate meetings. And um, you know, where does our consultant factor into all of that? That's a colossal use of time. All right, the same way to look into different meetings. No, but it's, it's interesting. There, but but it's but it, anyway, it posed, that certainly raises an issue. So um, what we came up with was the idea that the first working group meeting would be a joint working group meeting. Um, maybe on a weekend we're talking, maybe on a Saturday we have to work out the date. Um, and then um, it would be a, a window of probably three hours maybe, I don't know. Um, you know it's a fairly sizable commitment, but all of the working group people who have been appointed at that point would come together, they would get the same talk by the comprehensive plan committee members, the consultant, um, attorney, whoever has to talk, they all hear that, and then would have the ability to break into groups, maybe at the library, for example, or, or the senior center, break into groups um, and begin the discussions of their particular areas and have the resources in the room, like David and others, floating around. And that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, that, that, totally. Yeah. yeah. So, so that eliminates four meetings right there. Good. Uh, yeah. yeah. We're trying to be as efficient as possible. Yeah. So, and um, one thing we didn't say about the working groups is that the intention, I believe, that you talked about last time, was that. Uh, one member of the Board of Trustees would be assigned to a working group, and then the other three members on the committee, the three board chairs, would also be assigned to an area that they thought um, was of interest to them, you know, the most like, likely to uh, be interested in. So you would end up with uh, one or two people from the main comprehensive plan committee also involved on a working group level. So that's actually, we thought in the group context, uh, where when you do break apart into separate areas, um, that there still would be that continuity from the comprehensive plan committee. So it's not like they're just on their own floundering. Um, you'd have some continuity with board of trustees sitting right there as well, and, and the full comprehensive plan committee. So there are only three of them and five groups. <laughs> There's. Yeah, no, no, right, all right. So it's one or two on, a, on yeah. each working group. You, you know, it just depends on how they how they break it down. And how you decide time. which of us is on which. Well, you know, since we're not talking about names tonight, um, those names would be in the in the mix as well. Um, so you have a strong feeling on more of them. Yeah, yeah. Speak yeah. Out. Decide, yeah. Which, decide, which we decide. So <laughs> yeah, I did. At Larry's suggestion, who was a great suggestion, I reached out to Bruce Clark, thinking we might actually settle some of this tonight, but we're not. Uh, but I did reach out to Bruce Clark to get his areas that he might be interested in. Mm -hmm. I, I basically said, tell me what you're interested in, which ones you absolutely aren't interested yeah. in. And so he did that. I, I don't need to tell you tonight, but that's suspense. So Pat, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> do the same. I'm, 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 I'm sure you're the same. Really I'm fixing this. You want to call I think. I would take my card and put it in. Yeah. As I can. I, I could do that. I could do downtown. All right. Or I could do the code modification. But I, I think I'd, I'd rather do it go that way. Um, but, so you'll just tell Larry, I guess. Yeah, I'll start accumulating all that behind the scenes. Sure. <laughs> okay. Sometimes after the first public meeting, and before this first working group meeting, the, the comp plan committee has to decide on who's in the working groups. Yes. Yes. So okay. to just throw a date in there, there's a board meeting on February 22nd, whether it could be an executive session after the board meeting. Um, Which I think, Brian, we know, first of all, it's vacation week. We just went through Oh, February before. 22nd, okay. It is actually, and Brian's, right, you're away. I'm sure. I don't know if any other members of the town plan committee are away that week. No. No? Okay. <laughs> so Doing my let's, let's just assume that that meeting is still going to take place and I'll have Brian's input before that, of course. Yeah. So we're going to assign Brian to the sustainability. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm sure we know we're going to take that. All right, so, to, so February 22nd would be. Uh, Just select the working group. Select working group. Yeah. Finalize the people in the group. Yep. No, let's go. 
So, um, so then if you jump um, with those three items that I was bracketing before, if you jump to the last one, um, we're calling out our final working group meeting, and again, that would be, uh, as we said here, similar to the first one, where we all, all get back together, um, where the working groups can can present and discuss what their findings were to the, um, the larger, larger group, yeah, yeah and, and and vet any questions or you know anything just to sort of sort of like a report back, yeah, and and then in between. Um, this gave the, the flexibility to each commit, each working group to set however many meetings in between that they want. Um, it may be that they only meet one other time, I don't know. Uh, it may be that they meet, you know, twice a week, I don't know. But it's up to the committee, to the working group, to decide how often and when they meet. And, and Dave and Marianne would not be at those meetings but would certainly be available before and after for uh, either through email or phone <coughs> for questions or anything, of course, you know, as, as support. But I don't think it's necessary for them to, to be at every single working group meeting, right? I mean, that's, that's, so that's the concept that we laid out here. We would reassign to yeah. one. Once you have a member or two of the Comprehensive Plan Committee at these working group meetings, you know, so there's still, <coughs> there's still lots of continuity. It's just that you're not going to have a professional at every single meeting, you know. But conceivably, they could, if they were going to meet three times, they, the liaison from this group might not be at all of their meetings. Well, you'd have to discuss, decide okay. that as a working group. I mean, is that, is that the end of the world if that happened? or Probably. Uh, okay. I don't think so. <laughs> I, don't, I, I think we can get past that. But I, but I think as a group, the group has to decide yeah. how, how often and how necessary it is to meet and how often. Yeah. So it's also how cooperative the group is collectively. Each, you know, Since uh, we said we don't want them to agree. There's got to be some We're going to have five hung juries. <laughs> um, anyway, so that, that was the concept. Um, and, you know, we were, we were struggling. All of us were struggling with that the working group idea the most because of the possibility of being so many meetings. But I think this is pretty flexible enough. You know, it's a, it's a, I think it's a, a good use of our resources, but our professional resources, but also gives the working groups the flexibility within a limited time. Right. That's the other thing. Right. <laughs> within a limited time to, to meet as needed and as often as they need to. And none of these, we need a week, a two-week extension. Well, that's up to you. I'm, yeah. You, know, so you, can, you guys can drop the hammer on that. Pat, I, Pat, since you worked on the comp plan, well, I don't know if anybody else here worked on the comp plan before. No. Do, do, you, it's, do you think that's a, 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 a realistic uh, time frame? So. <clears throat> I'm talking about the, for probably, the working committee's beginning to end. It's probably aggressive to get yeah. it done. I mean, I, I think back when we did it in 1980, so it was, I think it was over a year that we were meeting. Mm, wow. Yeah. But, but like, I'm, I'm not talking about the whole process, but just the, wor the work oh, the whole process. Well, well, I mean, you, you know, you could, you could always, you know, extend it if you see that, you know, you, the committees are, the subcommittees are running into difficulty coming to resolutions or something and extend it for another few weeks, something like that. Um, you might want to build some flexibility into the whole process so that if you need some additional time that you figure you can make it. I mean, it's pretty good. It would be great if, you, if we could be done by the, the 20th of November. But I, we're pulling and talking about it. We, we, we're, we're not going for an entire master plan update. We're just looking at certain areas of the master plan. So it's different. Yeah, yeah that's right. Different. 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 I just the seems, yeah, the only, I'm, I'm only talking about the month, month, maybe six weeks that, that the working groups have to work out these issues. Cause to me, the issues are kind of big issues. Well, 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 but the working groups don't necessarily have to come to agreement. They can, can describe 
what what the different views are, right. and it's up to us. Right. 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 First thing, I mean, that would be fine. Right. I mean, that's what you were saying. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
reasoning for both sides, like whatever the issues were, if in fact they don't agree. Yeah. If they do agree, yeah. why do they agree? It's something you need yeah. something right. yeah. to yes. digest. We need a work product. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's, it's, work it's, work yeah. Yeah. Like, it's not necessarily to be agree, disagree, it's where I see it more likely happening, there'll be some of that, is what's more important. Uh -huh. You know, what are the priorities? So yeah, if you do two out of three things. And if they want to prioritize it on, on their own, that's that's yeah. great. Yeah. It's such a something more for you to, you know. I would think that at that, that last working group, all of them together, um, it would be videoed and we would be able to, you know, re-listen to their presentation. And if I can imagine them, you know, five people standing up with a chart and saying, here, let me talk through all these things that we discussed in our group, and if we have that on video, um, and you know you can zoom in on their chart, it it makes it less of a burden for them to do a more formal yeah, report. Yeah, it doesn't help us any because then we have to absorb you know you uh, twenty hours of YouTube or whatever. You know what I'm right. saying? It's like Ooh. I'd rather have a well, good well, summary. Well, if they'll do it, but. You know, we're asking them well, to do this in a short amount of time. Yeah. That's what we're asking them to do. I don't think we need I don't to know go that. back and look at live. No way. No way. Yeah, in addition, no, no, no. you know what One else, Connie? Be old, if you have yeah. to write a report, you crystallize your thoughts. All right. All right. I'm it trying to make it easier. Because if it's <laughs> just people no. talking, it's... Yeah. I've, I've been on a lot of come to some kind of need to make it easier. We need to make it easier. But Mark, Mark, it is just a question to make it easy. I know, which is important. But it's actually... It's on the focus. Yeah. So here's what I was trying to say, though, before. is I know from talking to some people in terms of getting involved in other village committees that there may actually, there's actually a great deal of pushback once you get beyond one day a month commitment. So I just want to make that obvious to say it because a lot of people, they can pull a month out of their schedule, but if you start talking about every other week even, you know, there's, there starts to be pushback. Like, well, I hear you, but I think this is a very different animal. Well, yeah, 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 give it to us an idea of saying, we're right. asking you to commit to three meetings over this a three-month period. Right. Right. Three this is very similar to the, the, the uh, uh, Board of Ed's, because I was on it, yeah, I actually yeah. chaired yeah. The, uh, the Fields Committee, and, and frankly, yes, there were, not, and not everybody was at every meeting, but you pretty much had, a, a, you know, people who signed up for it and said they wanted to be on it could. They were con they're pretty right. much committed to a few meetings, for sure. I don't great. think you'll have it focused. I think you'd be surprised, pleasantly surprised how many people actually do make it. I was just trying to put it out, uh, another uh, statement that would support a little bit of flexibility here, that maybe, you know, is it, it where else is there elasticity in the schedule? Is there any? Well, yeah, I mean, well, yeah. well, yeah, but we're not going to go. We want to get this done for Christmas. There's not a huge, <laughs> for Hanukkah, whatever. There's not a huge amount of work being done in the summer, and that's that's just the way it worked out. But it's also good, of course. I mean, there's kind of statutory things that are happening, but there's not like a lot of determinative stuff going on in in big public meetings, right? So. Um, you know, if some of the stuff started spilling into the summer, I mean, that, I guess we could take up some summertime, but I guess, I guess no. it's I, not ideal. I, you know. I, I don't just, less, this um, just to swing back to my thought about not having to write a report of, if, if a group has, you know, if there's a choice between if the whole process is slowed up when they say, We've got our ideas, we can tell it to you, but we don't have it in a actual formal report. That's all we can do. That's it. We're volunteers. Goodbye. <laughs> you know, you I, I don't know that you can I, say no then, to that. Then the board member summarizes the, the burden that falls on the board. Which one of us? Oh, the committee gets to, oh, gets to write it up. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, or it's okay. part of the group. What yeah. the issues? And also, it's clear that people, people, can write people, write people want to participate. If this is what the committee does. We're hoping for really passion is. on these topics. Yeah. You know, yeah. And really, really it's all something to have to. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> a list of issues, an outline of issues. And then, you know, you can obviously break it up. Why don't you write a paragraph on this one or something like that? There are ways to, okay. you know, basically right. share yeah. the word, okay. uh, share the load. <laughs> so. I'm convinced. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to be sitting there with bleary eyeballs watching all these. <laughs>
condensed down uh, to the issue and what are the pros and the cons of the issue. What's issue number two? Pros and right. cons, and not get into a a full blown report. Yeah, it's got to be concise. Yeah. You know, give it to you in, even in a chart, form, in a table form. It's typical planning yeah. stuff. Yeah. So, so the issue, here's need. the pros, here's what's positive about it, here's what's negative about it. That's what we need to go. Yeah. 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 So that's what's going to be fastfully written. So that's what the board of trustees you know? Know? is there to do, is to make yeah. the determination yeah. based on the pros and cons. Yeah. 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 So my only other concern about the schedule, okay, so is the June 22nd, how does that, for the second public meeting, how does that relate to the end of the school season, uh, school year? It's 26, I think, is the end. Yeah, I'm just hoping that it's before the end, only because people leave the day before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. June 23 is probably the June 23rd is a Friday. That's, I think that's the last day. Yeah, but the Father's really Day, the last day is probably 21st. That's the Father's yeah. Day weekend. Well, yeah, there's some elasticity in that date. Um, I mean, yeah. you want it sooner or later. I guess that's what I'm trying Father's to say. Father's Day is probably the 18th. I mean, if it had to be a week earlier than that, it would have to be a week earlier. I would do something that would keep it out of uh, From May 17th, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. So Father's what's the... You're right. That's, so the Thursday that's before. usually the graduation is the... Um, June 15th is the Thursday, yeah. Yeah, you want to avoid anything dealing with graduation and the song night and that kind of thing. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I, I mean, I, I guess I'm going to have to get the school calendar out. I got it right there. Unfortunately, you have it right there? Yeah. <clears throat> so it's the 8th, is the prom. Well, prom, the kids would be off to the prom at 7. We're not allowed to high school kids to no, the prom. Unless the kids are gone, why do you want to be Yeah, the uh, last day of school is the 23rd. <laughs> Where they go when they're supposed to last day for students is the 22nd. Yeah, so we're probably better doing it on the 15th. So we're switching the 22nd meeting to the 15th. Yeah, there's a regent's final exam right there. All right, study the parents' 22nd becomes the 15th. Which are we published? Oh, yeah, we have a school prom is on the 9th. Is it Friday? Friday, Friday. Uh, senior portraits the same day. If you need to That's right. <laughs> 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 oh, and <enough. laughs> <laughs> okay. well, that. Okay. Well, Thursday is the Thursday, June fifteenth. Comprehensive plan public meeting, right? Meeting number two. All right. And then uh, process it, whatever you hear from that meeting, feedback, whatnot. That would be in the middle of July as well. And these are not work sessions. Oh, that means that's a, that's a uh, BOT work session? I think it's yes. a, so yes. a regularly scheduled yes. one. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, when we could, we, we, we try to sync it up. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Otherwise, that's a little bit of medianitis. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, 28th of July draft comprehensive plan update. So that will be the actual document along with the draft generic environmental impact statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's a requirement of their VXA. What does that stand for? Draft yeah. generic. Draft yeah. generic. <laughs> yeah. I know what the G was here. Now, um, yeah, it has to be generic because it's in the plan. Yes. Right. Not anything specific. Is there any, is there, are there standard formats for this? I assume there are standard questions that have to be answered. Is it like a EIS uh, in terms of this 13 or whatever category questions, category questions or whatever there is? It, it's, um, it's flexible. Uh, essentially the plan itself becomes the, the environmental impact statement. Uh, you circulate that to the public, the public would have questions and then we respond to that in the final, what's called the final GIS. Mm -hmm. And there may be changes to the plan as a result of uh, responding to those comments. <coughs> I think the, so it's not a standardized form. Like, no, it's not like you would, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. It's, how right. could it be uh, uh, an EIS? Yeah. It's yeah. Not. You still have to do an EAF, don't you? Well, you can go right. No, you can go right to an environmental impact statement. You don't have to prepare an EAF. Although you can if you want to. Um, 
the issue is this board is the, the lead agency. So there's, I don't have to do no, I know it's coordinated it's review. Right, there's regulation. Yippee. So. No, it doesn't matter. The new bill is just a matter of Yeah, he's the only agency involved. Yeah. yeah. And the, the thought is that uh, it's generic so that you're not doing uh, or making specific recommendations. Those will come later. Um, so that way you're not doing additional analysis, you're not doing track accounts or level of service analysis. So again, that helps streamline. <coughs> so not a lot of modeling is what you're saying. Exactly. Right. Right. If there, if you're, if you want to implement uh, a specific recommendation, when you go to implement it, that's when you would go through. Uh, For that recommendation. Correct. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. Right. So if you had uh, a redevelopment of a certain property. Yeah, that's right. And, and um, the other issue is you'll have a series of recommendations in here, but you won't have specific language, let's say, for uh, a zoning code revision. Yes. So that would come later, and you would evaluate the environmental impact as part of that. <coughs> Which is what I'm assuming is going to happen. There'll be fallout from next year. We'll be busy <coughs> making changes to the code. Right. Or implementing other aspects of the company's plan. I think that's the kind of the, the goal. Thing. Um, Thank you. I mean, you can explain the rest of the processes. I'm not as familiar with it as, as you are. We're uh, August 9th work session. Uh, so the, the, yes, the work session again would be to uh, discuss the format for the third public hearing, and the third public hearing would actually be uh, the required we double up. We have a, the required speaker <coughs> on the DGIS. Uh, so that's again I'm trying but to. The third this public issue. hearing would be on the draft comp plan update. Correct. Maybe draft comp plan yeah, update. Third, the third third public meeting would also be the, the public <coughs> hearing on the. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I would make clear that the public meeting is on the comp plan update. Third public meeting on comp yes. plan update. Yeah, because, see, I mean, I know you've got to go through CEQA, but it's, it's, not, it's not as significant in, right. as the comp plan update. It's almost. So you'll have uh, a series of comments on <coughs> the document itself. You'll have written comments that may be submitted um, <coughs> during the, the, the public comment period. And we would take all those substantive comments and respond to those in what's called the final generic environmental impact statement. So it would be, that's probably where the, maybe a, a more substantive document where you've got a series of comments and we're responding to each in kind. Um, and it may cause the comprehensive plan to be modified in some way. Um, so it's, it's actually it's a good part of the process to get it. If you're trying to incorporate the public <coughs> public involvement, that's a good way of presenting your issues, getting feedback, and then preparing some additional uh, modifications if necessary. And uh, once the final generic environmental impact statement is prepared, you're going to review it. Um, when you accept it as complete, that gets circulated. and. Uh, there's a minimum of 10 days before you can uh, issue your environmental finding statement. And the finding statement essentially concludes the environmental review process, and that allows the village board to then uh, adopt the comprehensive plan. Uh, so th those are really kind of the, the last <coughs> two steps in the process. Once you have environmental findings, you've concluded the environmental review, and then you're in a position if you're want to adopt the comprehensive plan. No, I think you've got what's left out there that you've got to include not, is, is that you, uh, presumably you're going to revise the comp plan update in response to, to these public me, pu public comments. Yes. So you have to discuss that GEIS <coughs> responses. There's also to discuss the comp plan up update. Yes, right. You know, I would, I would. October 5th there? Well, kind of, kind of throughout, yeah. Meeting yeah, yeah. with CPC to discuss the FGIS responses and the, co and, and the revisions update. to the comp plan right. update, or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, because my guess is that's where more the comments are going to be on, are going to be on the substance of the comp plan yes. than it is on the 
that uh, the GEIS, the, 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 the GEIS. And then, um, and then the 25th would be the submission of the revised comp plan update, right? With the, the FGIS. FGIS. Right. And so if we're, wherever you're talking about the FGIS, I'm going to the comp plan, of course. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> I mean, I know you've got it factored in there, but yeah. other, when other people read this, I think right. it's easier to understand. <coughs> um, so I don't know questions about timeline? No, let's see how it goes on November's 20th. Do we have a, do we have a vetting pool yet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so when do we get names to you by? Wednesday. I think what we said, the time for Wednesday's meeting, okay. right? Okay. So I have one one question maybe for both of you. Um, the public meetings and the meetings of the Comprehensive Plan Committee are all public meetings under the Open Meetings Law, obviously, because you have board and trustees involved. Um, the meetings of the working group, working groups, um, are they they're not public? Or they don't have to be publicly noticed, or people could sit in on them if they want to? What, what, how do you want to couch that? I think, I think they can be closed if you want them to. But are they subject to the open meetings law when they're not? I don't, I think if you're just like an advisor, if you're an advisory committee, you're not, your meetings are subject to the open meetings law. But I'll double check it then. I Which think they're not because these are just televised. Well, certainly, if you certainly you can, even if it if it were open to the public, you don't have to allow public participation. Sure, right. Just as right. people yeah. could be there. But the notice thing, which could be difficult when the well, committees right. are doing their other. Well, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Plus, by the way, I could also see, I could also see five people sitting around the table saying, "Yeah, let's uh, let's get together." Um, your house. Yeah, why don't yeah, we, why don't we stop at your house? house. Well, yeah. yeah, we'll have. Yeah. Well, I can see that happening. Let me let me let me double check. My gut sense is that these are advisory committee meetings, so they're not subject to the open meetings. But, you'll check. but I'll send you an email. So if, if that's the case, are they? Um, whatever it takes. I don't care. Do that are public. they open to yeah. the public? <coughs> I mean, when there's a, a meeting, groups, of, you know, committees that aren't land committees, but. Um, isn't the statement we use <coughs> that these are public meetings, they're village sponsored committees, and members of the public can come and sit in, they can't participate. I thought that was true for all the committees. Maybe I'm wrong. I'll give you an example of the traffic committee. Yeah, right. That they don't have announced public meetings. Right. We had a meeting at Mary Beth's house one day. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's going to be my question is when yeah. do they have to have their meetings? Can they have it in the, right, you know, yeah. one of the members' houses or does yeah, it have to be in the village uh, venue? No, so no meeting be. has to be here, but let's say, let's say <coughs> Mary decides to have meetings at his house. He can't, but the, if it's subject to the open meetings law, anybody has to be able to come. Right. So so that's why, like, if you have a Skype meeting and, 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 and Anybody has to be allowed to be in any Skype session. Yeah. So, um, but, but that's but if it's subject. If, if it's, if it's subject, it's subject to it. I have a feeling it's not, but I'll. Yeah, I, mean, I, don't, I don't think it is either. Um, yeah, but yeah, let, 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 let me double check. This hasn't. <coughs> they haven't done it before, but I'll look at yeah. it. I don't, I, we used to meet at people's houses. Well, yeah. So right. I thought so. Because whatever. Um, <laughs> Whatever the answer is to this, just has to be in their marketing yeah. you know. And and frankly, if, it, if they are subject to the open meetings law, it does make scheduling the meetings a lot harder. Yeah, that's all. That's why I was anticipating, hopefully, that it won't be, and they can just do their work, and then they come back. You know, at, at the meetings, certainly any of the meetings that the conference of plan committees at are most definitely public because the board of trustees is on the committee. Yeah, I'm sorry, I mean, I mean, had you asked me before I came over, I could have had the answer. No, 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 it's okay. All I'm saying is not going to take a lot of research. I'll get to you early tomorrow. <laughs> well, not too early because I haven't meet up with it tomorrow. And I think that's part of the flexibility that you want to have with all these working groups mm -hmm. is to make it as easy yeah. as possible for them 
to get through this process. And it, it means meeting in somebody's living room where they have wine and cheese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nobody complains about you know, the amount of meetings that these subcommittees have just to show them this. That's right. That's right. <laughs> 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 This was a good idea. <laughs> About the quality of the food at the meeting. So. <laughs> well, hopefully there are a good number of these meetings which line up with regular meetings Casey anyway. Comes. Not that everyone's going to come to them anyway, but people, uh, certainly they are. Halloween candy, we should have working group catering funds. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh, yes. I think so. I, 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 maybe, Larry, uh, you can send around the revised one of these yeah. for the wording. So yeah, yeah, we can all put yeah. it on our calendars. Yep. And then a couple of days switch. Um, open meeting law, and then just get the names to Larry by uh, by Wednesday. Well, I have a question for Pat, having whatever he remembers from 1980. Was the public generally very interested and involved and coming and understood the importance of? A comprehensive plan or not? No, as I recall, we we as this committee met on a regular basis. Gosh, I don't, I don't know if it was like once a month we met. We, we had hired a consultant to work with us too, but it was a group of people. It was somebody from the board of trustees, from the planning board, and then there were just there were just citizens who were, you know, the president of uh, the um, Half Moon South Co-op was on the board mm -hmm. and. We just met, uh, you know, informally, but on a regular basis. And then I don't think it was presented. Uh, Reggie Barron was the mayor at the time. I think it was just a presentation at the end where it was, here's what here's this what committee did. yeah recommended, and here here it is. Okay. And that was it. It's, it's different. Well, Voted. then the board the board took our recommendations and made changes to the zoning code based on on the recommendations of the committee. But then for the 2003 comprehensive plan, there was a land use committee. They had a part-time staff person attend and take minutes and be supportive of the entire committee. I don't, and I don't know whether the meetings were public or not. I frankly don't remember that. But it was much more of a formal gathering. You know, I don't think they were a gathering at people's houses. You know? So I, I don't know if that's helpful, but I'm just saying there's different ways of doing it, and we just <coughs> we have to decide how to do it here. So, what, what well, in that case, was, was the public, you know, mm -hmm. intimately interested, involved, and but see, and that was the larger, that was the larger, what they called the land use committee at the time, you know, which is essentially the comprehensive plan committee, I assume. So they were separately constituted. It wasn't just you guys overseeing a couple of working groups. The only meetings that I'm calling into question as far as being public or not are the working group meetings. So that's different than what I just described in 2003. Well, 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 that's no, that's similar to what we had. Like, yeah, some, some of these people were on the Jan Blair was on that, Lou Lustenberger, uh, Pat Gilmartin. They were all on that original committee back in 1982. Well, right. I think Connie's almost more interested in yeah, just, was there was there uh, like, yeah, like people, people stopping really by? Yeah, like people really didn't care. care. Yeah. No, 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 yeah, I mean, if somebody had said to me then, what's a comprehensive plan? You know, I, I don't think I would have been able to say, you well, know, it's a joke, you know. Yeah. No, I mean, certainly people were, were interested in what the Comprehensive Planning Committee or Land Use Committee was up to. Okay. Because they were talking about things that people were interested yeah. in, like historic districts and whatever. Mm -hmm. But again, we're parking yeah, parking <laughs> but, but right, but that was that was the comprehensive plan committee I'm talking about. I don't know that they had separate like it wasn't structured quite the same way as this in 2003. So well, we'll find out. We'll find out. Yeah. The public is interested. Okay, I, I plan on sending an email Good. early early next week that really drum up some sort of interest. <laughs> and in that, are you going to say? If you're interested, yeah. Exactly right. Force the interest. Uh, exactly right. Tell them we're raising taxes if they don't. Raise your taxes if you don't. Don't tell us We're overriding. Yeah. 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 We're overriding a two percent tax cut if you don't come. Right. Okay. Very interesting. Good.
Yeah, well, can you get something into the newspapers, into like the Hudson I, Independent I, I, or the Enterprise? I think the Enterprise, like, like, I always feel like yeah. they, they're always looking for stories, yeah. so hoping they, they drop some pictures. I mean, it's, it is a pretty big deal. I mean, you can, mm-hmm. you can have a letter <laughs> to the editor. I can do that right. as well. Yeah, um, <laughs> maybe my, from the mayor's staff, so I can send yeah. it to the letter yeah. to the editor, maybe they'll want to do a story. Well, that's, the next, yeah. that, that's actually the next meeting that we have scheduled, which is reviewing the format of the first public meeting and we'll discuss the public outreach stuff. Okay. We'll, we'll get, we'll get there, into that. We're just going right into the agenda for <laughs> 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 good, good plan. Yeah, there you go. All right. All right. Okay. Thanks, guys. Hey. Thanks. 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 Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just like just like work. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Do this for a living, right? Dot shining again. No, that's going to be on the start. You didn't know. Uh, this is an optimistic uh, day. No, it's very sunny here. One third. On Main Street? It was my delightful. Uh, <laughs> 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 Are we adjourned? Um, we're adjourned. We're adjourned. I just want to know what's going on. I just want to know what's going on.